Melissa. Hey, how are you? I'm okay, thank you. How are you? Good. Just wanted to check in with you this week. It was a wild ride. Yes, it has been. <laughs> So I th then the market calls this morning, they'll look really good. So definitely hold them into next week. Did you do one or both or what did you do? I did both. Yeah, they look good. And I still have Lulu. Now Lulu had a pop. Some people got out. Some people are still in it. Did you watch it at all or you just kind of looked away from it after you took it? Oh, no, I just took it and walked. Yeah. I mean, I thought this would have been better, but if you'd watched it again, similar to the Walmart one, like if you had watched it here, do you see that there? Do you see my charts? I do. Here, and then even here, it was like not, this was not a good sign. But if you weren't watching it, you didn't see that. I mean, I still think that this looks good, and I like the market for next week as uh, to be bullish. So this could, this could still can go in the next week, you know. But some yes. people did get out of it because because you can see here with this. But anyways, I mean, if you're in it, you're in it. It's too late now. Yes, it was unfortunate that because I took it out of the gate and I could have got a better price if I'd waited slightly. You say that every time. You say that every single time. Well, but it's quite ironic. <laughs> it's quite ironic, isn't it? That if I wait, then... Uh, I don't believe will... that's true. But every time one doesn't go the way that you expect, you say that. Every time one does go... Costco, Alta, then you never say that. So you only say that on the ones that don't go. So so you would say that no matter what anyways. In other words, if you took the train when it fell in, you still would be in it if you were in it today and you would be down, it wouldn't matter the price you got. Does that make sense? If you got the best possible price on the day that it got, the best one in the world, the lowest point of the day, you would still be down today, so it doesn't matter. So therefore, your philosophy as far as waiting for quote-unquote pullbacks doesn't make sense, because if that had gone, you would have missed it then. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes, that, that is perfect. Yes, but you can I wait agree. for everyone it's... if you want, but you're going to miss trades then to go. That's your choice. I, I, I agree. I mean, the same with the market trades today. I took them when the market opened. I know, I but I mean, it's look and of at this. course, it pulled in. It doesn't, you, you, you really are screwed up in the head about that. Now, you just it, redid the class. It's probably me wanting, wanting a better price than I actually get, and that's Th the problem. That, there yeah. is no reason for you to want that. It's not going to make a difference. You're not taking 50,000 contracts. If you were, <laughs> maybe I could understand. If, maybe I could even justify. You could say, well, I could have got another five. Oh. 5,000. No. What the difference for you, Philip, where, where you're at with the risk is to concentrate on what you're focusing on. It would not make a difference to you. You're being, you're like being, what is it? What is the British phrase? Penny, penny foolish, pound poor. Or what the heck is it? It's something. What's the phrase? Penny, I don't know. It's whatever it is. What's the phrase? I'm trying to think. You, you've messed it up for me. I, would I know. To... <laughs> Penny like shy, pound foolish. There we go. Actually, now that I'm thinking of it, with the new Hudson Yards, a British restaurant opened up down here called Queen's 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 Yard. It's supposed to be big over there in London. Have you ever been to it? I haven't. Queen's Yard. No, I haven't. I, I first of all, you can't get in a reservation. It's impossible. But second of all, I looked at the menu and they have things like rabbit. I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't, I don't even know if I'd like to eat this food. But there is much meat on rabbits, so I don't know how much there is there. It's you know, how much very avant-garde, but anyways, you can't even oh, get right. in. Yeah, you can't even get into the place right now. But I, I was thinking of you because it's supposed to be some big London chef that that some famous guy that came over here that uh, that, that has it going. It's a nice you, bar. Hmm? I thought you were going to say that new restaurant that's opened up at Columbus Circle. Which one? What's that one called? Oh no, that looks good. Now that place I go to, London Birds, uh, something London yes. Birds. That looks that looks wonderful for brunch. I've never been there. I'll have to go there. I haven't been there yet because every time I go there, I go to Porterhouse. But I mean, that does look good for <laughs> right. brunch. For it uh, looks like they have a cute brunch. Actually, they had something they opened last year in the fall, and I thought about going there for the Thanksgiving Day Parade. They had some special thing where you could watch the parade from there. I'll, I'll get there eventually. That looks like a place I'd like the food. This other place, I'm not sure if I like the food. You right. know. Anyways, long right. story yes, short. Yes, you to toss it between Potterhouse. Yes. Yeah. Long story short, I. You have to decide. If you really are that concerned, then wait. But I'm telling you, you will miss some trades. So therefore, I don't think you're going to fare any better. In other words, you'll miss some that go right away by waiting. And then some right. that you want to get a better price in, like like the this one or the Lulu, whatever. Then, then you'll be glad you waited. So I don't... 
you're, you're wanting something that works in all instances, it doesn't. If the trains are going to work, they're going to work even if somebody got the worst price in the day. When they fail, they actually just fail. Or in the case of Lulu, even if, if you got out of that positive and had a decent price in it, it still wasn't a big option. It didn't have the move I thought yet. Now, it could in the next week. But what I'm saying is I don't think you're going to – I think you might miss some then. So if if it's re if you really want to wait, then you're going to miss some of the trades. If you can live with that, then wait. I don't think it's going to make a difference because of the quantity of the contracts that you're taking right now. Yeah, yes, I understand that. But the problem is with Lulu, I did pay over the odds. I paid slightly more than what I wanted to pay on my allocation of price um, of overall cost. You mean cost. for your risk? That's what yes, you're talking about. Well, exactly. then you shouldn't have yeah, done the it. Then you shouldn't have done it. Then we've talked about this before. But I don't want to miss any trades. How much more did you risk on that? Well, it cost me five ninety five. And you're what are you? I forget even now what you're risking now. What are you risking a trade? Well, it's between three hundred and four hundred, really. Somewhere that's, in that read. I know that's too much because you risk double. Now, if it was like fifty bucks more, a hundred dollars more, but you risk double. You were stubble. Now, again, if that goes on to work, which I'll see something in the next week to give the confirmation that it still will work. Right now, there's nothing to take away from today. The fact that it's falling here today doesn't, I don't, this is, this is not mean the trade is dead. I have to see how it acts next week. But I will say, though, that I wouldn't double your risk. I wouldn't double your risk. So if it, I, you have to have it, you have to kind of look and say, okay, well, this is a little bit more than I wanted to, but it's not crazy. You don't want to double your risk. It's too late you're in it. I mean, what are you down in it now? Well, put it this way, it's only worth $109 at the moment. I know, but it's 109 bucks. Do you want to hold it through or do you want to kill it? <laughs> I mean, I'm no, just telling you, got, you really did I've got risk eight, double. Eight days, eight days left on it in I, time. I know, you got a lot of time. You have a lot of time, and I think this trade could still work for the people that are in it. I'm going to do a video later today or tomorrow, but I'm just telling you that it didn't go the way that I wanted. If you can risk a little bit more, I don't have a problem with that, but don't double or triple your risk in anything. So the question is here, you want to kill it? If, it, if you kill it and it goes, you're going to be pissed. If you get out of it, you save 100 bucks because if the whole trade fails, then you lost double your risk. It was like you did two trades. I don't you Yes, know. but at the moment, when you look at the, the daily chart, it's not really gone anywhere, has it? It has dropped, yes. But I don't think this really, looks bad. Yeah. It didn't do what I thought, but I don't think this is like, oh, my God, it's never going to work in a million years. No. FDX, I saw at one point that that was just dead as a doornail, but, not, but I don't feel that way about this. Because the market really didn't go anywhere today. So, you know. Right, right. And okay. an hour into the close, I don't think it's going to. Anyway, so you're in the market trades. You're in both the market trades. That's positive. Lulu, don't double your risk in the next trade. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't even do it in earnings season. Other than that, that's all that you have going on right now, right? It is, yes. Okay. All right, very good. Did you do any day trades this week or not? Did you, did you do RH this morning? I didn't. I concentrated on um, just watching the options tick away. Um, I did watch the other day. Um, I think I don't know which one you did, but the one that you did, it was very sloppy. It was Land. all over the place. Yeah, I know. It was. It was insane. It was I, crazy. I, town. I did. I think it was home. I did. I, I I did home as a paper trade. Oh no! Wait a minute. You did. That was a short. I think. It was. Oh, and, and Len was, was crazy. Short. It popped. It was a fantastic pop on the first bar. And to be quite honest, that, but my paper trading, it, it worked fantastic. And I, I then obviously took it again twice because it still, it set up nicely. Oh, then you did this and you did good. Then you did well. I, I did paper so trading. So are you back? Oh, okay, actually. you paper traded. So I was going to say, I thought you were going to take a month off day trading. Are you coming back or what are you I, doing? I am. I am. I'm off at the moment, but I am. But when I can, and if I see anything that catches my eye, then I will go with it and see mm -hmm. what I spot. And then it's just a case of just, you know, relax and take it and see what happens and what develops. Mm -hmm. But I noticed you took a trade. I think you went long that particular day. But it I seemed was going to say, yeah, that's what I thought trade. in my mind, Len. Yeah, but I didn't like the way that this looked. It looked too thin. It even looks too thin right now. I mean, you can look at it and say, well, it has a volume, but I don't like the way it looks. It looks weird to me. Just like, yeah, look, that, look at this. This is like, look, yeah. it's just weird looking, these little Yeah, boxes. can you go back to that day, the same day? Um, I forget which day it was. I know, I was. saw it, and I thought it looked weird. And I I mean, I saw it. I actually saw it in live time, it, and it went, I, I just thought it, it looked it strange. It seemed to trade very well. It was, it was, it was, it was good. That first, that 931 bar, 
that was a, a cracking bar was that you but could again, have been in and out yeah but again i mean it's easy to see it now it's flat but i'm telling you when you yes. watched it live it was like again this is really hard to like explain but it was like it was like it wasn't moving and then it moved and then it like oh it, i did i watched it live it and i like, watched I the level two it. yeah and it, it was it was okay it was a nice trade and obviously it bounced came back up hit resistance and dropped again yeah, I mean, some people oh. did it in the room. I, I just was, I couldn't get, I, did, I rated it. I rated it. I rated it. Oh, did you? Rateable. What yeah. did you rate it at? I don't even remember, but it rated good enough to do. And then I just yeah. moved off yeah. of it. But Len worked really good, but it, that was hard. Um, but that ended but, up working good too. But I never could get, I just didn't feel like doing this. I don't know. It just, I, to yeah, me, it I thought, was strange. I thought you got stopped out on the first trade in Len. We did. We got stopped in Len. Oh, and then you? the second one and the third one worked really well. And thank God. It, I, I was thinking it was going to go to 54, and then thank God, it, it, you know, it, it was a decent enough move to get out. Because honestly, if you had held this, it never got to 54. This was when you said a wild one. I thought you meant this because this was a wild one. It I mean, stopped, look at those moved, oh, moved yeah. again, looked like it was going to get to 54, and then this was insane. Yes. I mean, I do like shorting as, as opposed to going I long. Know, I know, I know. They are very nice. That's why I picked home. It worked okay for me. Oh, like I say, obviously I was paper trading it. So. Well, that's good. It's good for you to practice. It's good for you to practice. And um, But do you see, I'll just make one quick more point here before I let you go. I mean, because I don't know what we're going to have here because it's just, we got a week until earnings season. But you risked $600 almost on the Lulu. I'm sure that you did not risk 600 in the SPY and you did not risk 600 in the Qs. But these trades are probably going to work and you didn't risk 600 in them. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's like you'll have to, if you make money in the Qs, 1R, and you make money in the SPY, 1R, it's just going to cover the Lulu if it loses, and then you won't be ahead. You see why, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I, oh, I, I agree, but at the same time, I'm a bit loath to take anything other than your particular call. I know, yes. but I'm saying you still can't take more than what you are supposed to take, at that much more. A little I, bit is I, okay. I understand, I understand. Yes, maybe I should have taken the lower strike, but at the same time, Yeah, you I'm could have done for, that. Yes, you could have, you could have, you could have done that, or a higher strike, you mean? Yes. Yeah, yes, that's what you strike. could have yes, done. Yes, and in fact, yes. that's then what you should do the next time because we're still going to make money on it. You, that's what you should do. But I'm just pointing out here, uh, your results next week. Like if this has a move and it moves great on Monday and you get out, you could basically have three trades, two good trades, and one negative trade and not be up because of the risk that you took in Lulu. Like I'm fine if it costs 350 for a contract and you pay 350 and you normally risk 300, but to pay close to six when you normally is three, do you know what I'm saying? Like, what did you pay oh, for I do, the... I do, yeah. but the price was all over the place. It was really, really annoying. I but mean, that's I how it is. Price... I know, but that's how it is. That's how but I mean, goes. I did risk, I risked 454 in the SPY and I also risked 429 in the Qs. So it, it's tipping, a little bit on the upside, but anyway. Well, it sounds like you're just risk. It doesn't sound like you're risking 300 at all. Well, <laughs> what are you doing? It doesn't. I mean, well, you just I'm told not, me you're risking I'm, 300. I'm, now you just told me three trades that you took between 450 and 600. So where is your risk 300? In no trades that you're doing? I mean, that doesn't well, even make any well, sense. I know, I know, it's edged a little bit on the on the higher side, but I did risk about 325 in my Apple trade, which failed. Well, um, see. Apple had that again apple had the quick move up it was positive if you didn't watch it to get out of it then you got out of that negative because that didn't I, have the move and i called it late but it still was up when it gapped up the following day but again you've got to watch these miniature charts but that, I, you know, that to me I, I i watched your video but that to me was was i i was hardly up at all melissa in that and i, I took the i train. know but we've been through this yeah. before when the chart looks like it's not going to continue what are you going to do? If you just want to let it collapse, you can let it collapse. But I mean, when it's obvious that that's happening, then that's what's, then what are you going to do? Just let it run amok? Because this well, basically fell, the market fell. If you watch the chart, again, if you're not watching the charts at all, I mean, I, you know, then you're just saying, well, well whatever. I'm, it depends on what I'm doing. If I, if Here's, I'm I mean, around, this is then like, yes, I will watch the chart. But other than that, I will let them play out. I mean, generally, my plan is to take them for longer than a day. I know, I 
I know we've been through that, but I mean, in this case here, I called it the one day. It gapped up the next day. So that's not, that has nothing to do with anything here. This would have fit within your parameters to not get in and out the same day. This had the move the second day, gapped up, ran up, looked good, but the market started collapsing. And when this happened, it didn't look good. And even if you still had it here, this looked okay, looked okay. But then at some point, here's the day. So then you're just going to say, well, it's, you know, I mean, well, I don't know. Well, yes, but it's a question of when do you say cut? Because I obviously... think these are things you need to think mm -hmm. about. If you're not going to watch the miniature time frames to, to manage the trades, then you need to decide if you're going to hold everyone to come hell or high water, even if they're clearly not going to have the move that's expected, which was Apple and really was Lulu too yesterday. I, that did not do what I thought that it would do by the close. So, you know, if you're if you don't want to watch them and manage them that way, then everyone's again, you're playing everyone through. But it's it's sometimes it's very obvious that the moves that are that the expectation is not there, at least to me, when you're watching the chart. Right. Right. I will so, have to consider that then in future. Like, I mean, example this, like the market, it looks good yeah. here. But like if them if this if say it was not at, say we were here. And it was four o'clock or three fifteen. That wasn't what I thought we would do today. Now we didn't. We we just completely had a nice move here. But like yes. if it was three fifteen, I'd say, well, this didn't do what I thought. This doesn't look good here. You yes, know? I agree. Yes, it has picked up. It has turned around. Yeah, because it looks like it could. Be so I mean, I don't know. I thought you're at your desk a lot looking at charts. If you're not, I mean. There are times when I am and times when I'm not, but unfortunately, it's picking the right time, isn't it? Again, so. But you know I the mean, times. Yeah. Times in the morning, ten o'clock, noon, two. There's certain yes. times where there's more reports come out. There's economic data. There's stuff for you to be watching. Yes, I am generally around at the open. Okay. To watch, obviously, for a day trade to see how it plays out, and see if I'm picking the right trade. And it's interesting to see how it compares with what you've done on the day. Yeah, I think you're gonna. I think these market trades are gonna work out good. So you risked a little bit more in them. That was fine. And then um, we'll just see where these go. If this does what I think it's gonna do on Monday, this could be both of these trades could be nice trades. But Lulu, I mean Lulu to me has to make a move on Monday, Tuesday at the very very latest, or it's not gonna work. But it'll be completely down by Tuesday if it doesn't make a move Monday. So, you know. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Good luck. Right. Thank good you, luck Melissa. With Brexit. How are you doing with the Brexit over there? <laughs> Doesn't look like you're doing very Bloody well. Frustrating. Yeah. We should be out and it should be done and it should have been world trade organization simple. It's, simple. It's like Not it's never going to be this. done. It's like literally, what is the pound even worth now compared to the US dollar right now over there? It's horrible, isn't it? Um, it was bouncing around 130 last time I looked, but it, it's just a, a complete farce. Theresa May has made a real cock up of it all. But I mean, she when should, you think she about it, she should not be prime minister. She should not be prime minister. She's hanging on though. She is hanging on. She is. She is. They are selling us out. Wow. Her her agreement, her treaty, which mm -hmm. is being put through, mm -hmm. is a complete sellout of this country. So what happened today? They had some kind of vote today. I didn't even look at the result. What happened with it today? Well, I haven't looked today mm -hmm. because every time I do, I haven't looked at the tweets yet, but mm -hmm. I, I get, it's got to the point where you become so frustrated. Yeah. Democracy has been pushed aside mm -hmm. and it's really, really bad. Really so is bad. So when they did the original vote, was it 2016? It's been three it years was. now, right? It was. Yeah. We are supposed to leave today. We were supposed to leave. Now it's pushed further into April. Do you even think it happens in 2019? I don't know, Melissa. I really don't know. People keep changing sides. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the people, the politicians who were voted in mm -hmm. have gone back on their word. Wow. That is it, ultimately. They've been voted into places where they shouldn't have been voted mm -hmm. in on, on what they've put forward. When do you it's have totally, elections over there? What is it in the fall or the spring? Um, it's it's a while yet. We have we've got local council elections, but they are they're not really they're nothing to do with the, really the government as such, just local. Wow. Um, but that will be interesting to see. But we we have if the, if it continues, we have to vote for the European Parliament. Our MPs to go there, MEPs, mm -hmm. 
which will be incredibly interesting to see what happens if it gets that far. I hope to God it doesn't get that far. Mm. It is incredibly frustrating. It really is. Everybody is frustrated with it. It's a sellout. It's a sellout. It really is a sellout. They've sold us out. Uh They should have been out. We should have been out away. And as far as Mr. Trump goes, he was precisely right. Theresa May does not and did not have a clue how to negotiate. <laughs> I didn't even listen to his comments about her. I must, I missed that. Yeah, I, 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 that's funny. Well, now he was she, spot on. She is spot in on. through till when though? When is her term up? Oh, she. Oh, God knows. She, she's, she said that if, if her party. Or, or whoever votes this through, what she's putting forward now, mm-hmm. she will step down as Prime Minister. Mm-hmm. Well, have you ever thought so stupid in your life? Mm-hmm. She's going to step down if her proposal gets put through. I mean, come on. Yeah. You know, yeah. it doesn't want to be put through and you need to go. Simple as that. Wow. And have someone in who wanted to leave and who has the, the foresight to see where this country is going, not throw it to the dogs. Because that's basically what they are doing. And the DUP, which are holding everything up at the uh-huh. moment, the, the Democratic Unionist Party in Ireland, uh-huh. who have who have really kept Theresa May in power, they are support they're supporting fully leaving and delim- eliminating this backstop. Uh-huh. It's all it's all a farce and they've used this this island border of both the EU and the Irish as as a lever mm-hmm. and it's not a lever mm-hmm. there's no need for any border everything can be done electronically mm-hmm. it's a fast everything can come in and out of the country electronically mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. they're they have they're, they've tried to create problems so That's whose fault done. whose fault is it though that it's not coming together it's all i mean it can't oh, be it's all theresa theresa may. May. it's theresa may and, it, and unfortunately the people in parliament behind the scenes uh-huh. They are orchestrating all this behind the scenes, wanting to remain. This is why her so-called Brexit plan yeah. is not. It's just capitulation to the EU, really. And this plan that she's doing now, we will not be able to vote out of it. Once we are in it, it's worse than actually being in the EU to start with. Wow. No, I didn't even know that. Oh, it's, it's a mess. Nigel Farage is top dog. He he has worked. The guy the guy should be knighted because he has worked <laughs> hard for the last twenty years mm-hmm. to get this through, and he is spot on, absolutely spot on with it. So the, it's interesting because the pound used to be worth twice as much as the dollar. Now it's down. I haven't looked up what the euro is, but now it's down basically where the euro is, or underneath that even now. 1.3 if it's 1.3. Yeah, 3. I think it dropped to about 124 or 123 at the Yeah, work, but I mean, it used point. to be one pound. Like, for, I mean, it used to be really, really cheap for you to get U.S. products and services for, compared to what you, you know, with the pound. Now, oh, it's not. Yes, it yeah. did. I mean, I remember it used to be about 180 at one point. Yeah, I remember even 190 because it was at a time that I was looking at, at going ever to visit London yes. and uh, I thought well this is going to be double you know if I go so and so but it's funny yeah I mean it's just I think that I think this whole nutsiness has collapsed the currency value if if we fall out on world trade organization rules the the pound they say will drop mm-hmm. but that's not bad because obviously we are um, it's making it cheaper for us to export right which will be better for us mm-hmm. it's not it's not a bad thing that the pound will come down. And plus, obviously, it makes you yourselves in the in the US, it makes it cheaper for you to obviously travel to the UK yeah, for, and spend for in the UK. Yeah. So that, it's, not, it's not a bad thing at all. It really isn't. And there's a, there's a lot of good points to it. So it's not going to, you know, cripple the country. And it, it's a lot of this crippling, it's just talk. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like people in in the US mm-hmm. talking Mr. Trump down, mm-hmm. which it's it's totally wrong. It's all this fake news. Yeah. What do people over there, I may as well just ask you this right now, what do people over there think of Trump and Great Britain? It depends who you speak with. There are people who do like him. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he's maybe, his, his brashness, I think, at times can turn people yeah. away. 
But when you look at his principles and you cut through all that, you can understand why he's doing what he's doing. I mean, as far as a border war goes, I fully understand why he wants that. We have the same thing, but we have water. Mm-hmm. And obviously we are having problems now. You are having people, problems, yeah. With, with people getting into boats and mm-hmm. sailing across from France. Mm-hmm. So once they get set foot in the UK, they are then put into a detention centre, but they tend to have a bit of leverage once they are here. Mm-hmm. Now, where and, you have immigrants coming from, what countries over there? Oh, they come. They have a route from Africa. Um, they come across Africa, over Italy, and around France. But basically, once they enter into an e- into a, a European country, uh-huh. they're not supposed to stay in that country, and obviously ask for asylum or whatever mm-hmm. um, to stay in that country. Well, they're trying to move on and they've been moving on through France mm-hmm. and they've been trying to get over at the port of Dover and getting into the back of wagons and, you know, smuggling, people have been smuggling them across. Um, but obviously that piece of water mm-hmm. is, is, is a very, very good deterrent. Which is what you don't obviously have. You have land and that's it and they can climb through those fences. And yeah, it's a over. huge stress. The state of Arizona, it was just massive. And even Texas, such big states. So, yes, yeah. yes. So I can fully understand why. And it makes sense to have one. It's simple, isn't it? You put a wall up, you stop people climbing through, you know. I mean, yeah. don't, have to do with that. don't have to do with technology or anything like that. It's just simple. So I can fully appreciate why you would like one. It's all, it all makes sense. It's just unfortunate that you've got a similar scenario where people have been voted in mm-hmm. and you've got this battle, haven't you, within yeah. the houses to try and get something passed. Well, that's, well, that's the same sort of scenario that we have in Parliament. Mm-hmm. We've got people that have been voted in and saying that, they have been voted in saying that they will do something and they haven't. They've gone back on their word. But uh, at least half the country likes Trump. Does anyone like Theresa May over there now? <laughs> oh, so, so, I, I think can't imagine some she's people, any supporters at all. You know, I think some people do like her, but I, I, I don't. Uh-huh. I don't like her. I've never liked her from day one. I gave her the, the benefit of the doubt, thinking, yes, she might come up with a deal. Mm-hmm. No, absolutely not. The more you hear and the more she's gone back, I mean, all this, you know, no deal, uh, what is it, no deal is better than a bad deal. I mean, what a load of crap. Yeah, I mean, yeah. She said that time and time and time again, uh-huh. and it's not obviously gone to fruition. Yeah. We are still tied up now. So what do you say? Very I don't know, it'll be interesting to see if it runs into 2020, because here it is, it's April. God, I hope not. Yeah. I really do, I really do. Well, it's interesting to hear your take on it, Philip. How's your dad doing? He's stable, shall we say, at the moment. Still well, investigating. Is Well, that's better. Might, it might not be pneumonia. It could be something else, but we'll see. When are you going to find out? I took him in for a scan yesterday, so they are still assessing it and seeing okay. what possibilities it could be. Um, right, well, pneumonia, pneumonia at the moment would be a good thing. Really? Because if it's if it's my other thought, it would not be good. Well, people do have pneumonia for a long time, so it could be pneumonia. I ho- I hope it is. Yeah. I do hope it is, and it can be cured. I do, because that's looking on the bright side. Well, it's good well, if they do all the tests and they'll make sure. Let them do every test that they want to do. You know. Yes, 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 definitely, absolutely. Still optimistic. Very good. All right, good talking to you, Philip. Have a good weekend. You too. Thank you, Melissa. Okay, talk to you later. Thanks. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.